A br Eye on the Truth Part 3 A brief summary from the origin of Christianity to its present-day reality. Mecca is where the pilgrims go from mountain to mountain, strength to strength. In the above biblical verses, Psalms 84 verse 11, we read they go from strength to strength. In the Hebrew text, the original word for strength that was used in this verse means a hill, mountain, or barrier. This seems to be a very clear description of one of the Muslims' rituals in the holy city of Mecca during the pilgrimage, as they go from Al Safa Hill to Al Marwa Hill. Dr. Zaglul Al Najjar. The verse starts with Blessed is the man whose strength is in you. This seems to refer to the final prophet Muhammad who came with the pure message of the monotheism. Dr. Zaglul Al Najjar. In addition, the Valley of Baca is clearly mentioned as a proper capitalized noun in the biblical verse, therefore, it's an existing place and not a metaphorical one as believed by others. The biblical verses describe a sacred place accommodating the courts of the Lord. In fact, all of these descriptions apply to the city of Mecca. While Muslims believe that the city of Jerusalem is a holy place, they regard Mecca as the Zion prophesied in the Bible. The meaning of the word Zion, Hidayat al hayara Ibn Qayyim al Jazia is elevated place. This is a metaphorical description for a holy place applied to many cities. It was used to describe the church and Israel in the Babylonian captivity, so it seems like it has been used for any group or mass of people worshipping God. Or to refer to a specific geographical location which can be applied on Mecca here. The Anglican Church of New Zealand printed a book of prayers replacing the word Zion and the word Israel with the words, the holy mountain of God and the people of God. Respectively to clarify the meaning. For all the saints a resource for the commemorations of the calendar. Liturgical Version The Anglican Church in Aotearoa, New Zealand and Polynesia, 2014 Moreover, the idea that the text tells about the past can be easily contested, as the expression of incidents in the form of the past is used in the language of the Bible. Regardless of their point in history or future. The ancients' writers used the future tense to denote the present, the past without discrimination, and the past used to denote the future, Espinoza says, this caused many similarities. It is very well known that the temple in Jerusalem was established a long time after Prophet Abraham, while the holy house in Mecca was there before Abraham. The Quran tells us that it was in fact the first house of worship appointed for humanity, built by Prophet Adam, with the help of the angels. It was Adam who erected the foundations of this house, which was later rebuilt later by Prophet Abraham and Ishmael. Indeed, the first house of worship established for mankind was that at Mecca blessed and a guidance for the worlds. Quran 3 hours 96 minutes The first house built on earth for all people to worship Allah was the sacred house of Allah in Mecca, a house of worship full of worldly and sacred blessings and guidance for all the worlds. In this place of worship are clear signs of its special honor and blessings, such as the acts of worship performed in it and its landmarks including the stone that Abraham stood on when he was raising the walls of the Kaaba, and whoever enters it is safe, with no harm coming to them. People have a duty to Allah to perform the acts of Hajj in this house of worship, if they are able to do so. Whoever rejects the duty of Hajj disbelieves in Allah, and Allah is in no need of them or anything all in the worlds. O Prophet, ask the people of the Scripture, the Jews and the Christians, why they reject the proof of the truth of your prophethood, including the proofs that came in the Torah and the Gospel. When Allah watches over everything you do, witnessing it, and will reward you accordingly. O Prophet, ask the people OT the scripture, the Jews and the Christians, why they stop people who have faith from the religion of Allah, wanting to twist it from the truth to falsehood. And turning its people from guidance to misguidance, when they witness that it is the truth confirming what is in their scriptures. Allah is not unaware of what they do in disbelieving it and preventing people from following it, and they will be repaid accordingly. O oh, you who have faith in Allah and follow his prophet, if you follow a group of the people of the scripture, from the Jews or the Christians, in what they say, and accept their opinion in what they claim, then you will return to disbelief after your faith because of their envy and their misguidance. How could you disbelieve in Allah after you have had faith in him, especially when you have the biggest reason for having firm faith with you? The verses of Allah are being recited to you, and the messenger Muhammad, peace be upon him, is making them clear to you. Whoever holds on firmly to the Book of Allah and His Messenger's way of life, Allah has guided them to the right path. O oh, you who have faith in Allah and follow His Messenger, be mindful of Allah as you have been commanded, by following what He instructs you to do. And by staying away from what He prohibits you from doing, and be thankful for His favor, holding firmly to the religion He has given you, so that when you die, you die surrendering in devotion to Him. Surah Ali Imran, 96-102 
Kaibia, which has always existed in the accounts of history, was visited annually by people from the most distant corners of Arabia, and its sacredness was respected by the whole of Arabia. Today its visitors come from all over the world and its sacredness to believers is well known. The verses below command the believers to praise the Creator at the villages inhabited by Kedar, i.e. to glorify and praise Him in Mecca, as Kedar is a son of Ishmael and the forefather of Arabs. His offspring lived in Arabia. We read. Sing unto the Lord a new song, and His praise from the end of the earth, you that go down to the sea, and all that is therein, the isles, and the inhabitants thereof. Let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice, the villages that Kedar doth inhabit, let the inhabitants of the rock sing, let them shout from the top of the mountains. Isaiah 42 10-11 Prophet Ishmael is the base for the family tree of Prophet Muhammad through Kedar. Muslims lift up their voices by praising God the Almighty and glorifying Him in Mecca. In their five daily prayers, Muslims include the praise of Prophet Abraham and his followers with the praise of Prophet Muhammad and his followers. As you know, Kedar is a descendant of Ishmael, these are the names of the sons of Ishmael, listed in the order of their birth, Nubayath the firstborn of Ishmael, Kedar, Adbiel, Mibsam. Genesis 25 verse 13 Mecca which is covered by a multitude of camels, and to which flocks of Kedar are gathered. The multitude of camels shall cover thee, the dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, all they from Sheba shall come, they shall bring gold and incense, and they shall shew forth the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee, the rams of Nebaioth shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with acceptance on mine altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. Isaiah 60 verses 6 to 7. Mecca exists between Midian, North Saudi Arabia, and Sheba, Yemen, Kedar and Nebaioth are sons of Ishmael, according to Genesis 25 verse 13. Kedar was the second son of Ishmael, the ancestor of the prophet Muhammad. Nebaioth is the firstborn son of Ishmael. Abraham decided to settle Ishmael and his mother Hagar there because of a divine instruction given to Abraham. Hagar did not find water, so she ran seven times between two hills looking for water. This is the origin of one of the rituals performed during the pilgrimage to the city of Mecca by Muslims the same ritual referred to earlier concerning the two strengths. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. So, she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy as he grew up. He lived in the desert and became an archer. While he was living in the desert of Paran, his mother got a wife for him from Egypt. Genesis 21 verses 19 to 21 The Bible tells us that a well of water gushed out in the desert of Paran, the name Paran or Pharan. has often been used to refer to the wilderness and mountains near Mecca, from which Hagar and her son drank. Sir Syed Ahmad Khan, 1870 A series of essays on the life of Muhammad and subjects subsidiary thereto. London, Trubner and Co. pp. 74-76 This is consistent with the above verses which refer to the Valley of Baca as a place of springs. The well is available to this day and is called the Well of Zamzam. As mentioned earlier, Abraham and Ishmael later rebuilt the Kaibie, the house of worship, in Mecca. The place where Abraham used to perform prayers near the Kaibie is still there, called the Station of Abraham. During the pilgrimage, pilgrims from all over the world commemorate the offering of Ishmael by Abraham by slaughtering a ram. The fact that another area called Faran exists in the south of Palestine does not preclude the existence of another Faran that was inhabited by Ishmael in Hijaz, Arabia where Prophet Ishmael and his father rebuilt the Kaibie, and where the well Zamzam exploded under his feet, as recognized by a number of historians. Like Jerome and the theologian Eusebius who believed that Farron was Mecca. In the figure we find a map was painted in the French court at the time of Louis XIV showing the location of the mountains of Farron in the Arabian Peninsula. According to the Muslim faith, Beersheba is one of the names of the well of Zamzam in Mecca, not the name of a city in Palestine, as the geographical description does not apply to South Palestine. Beersheba. In fact, there is no place on the earth where a well gushed out for Hagar and her son Ishmael and where Ishmael lived and begot a great nation other than Mecca. Abraham looked up and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So, Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. 
Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies, and through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed, because you have obeyed me. Genesis 22 verses 13 to 18. Here the verse discusses a place where Abraham offered his son a place where generations will worship God. There is such place on earth where Jews or Christians celebrate Abraham's sacrifice and worship God in. However, in Islam, this sacrifice is celebrated in Mecca, it is also the main place of worship for Muslims where they have the Feast of Sacrifice to commemorate the sacrifice of Ishmael. We read, also, These I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. Isaiah 56 verse 7 Note the mention of all nations. The Jews are only one nation, unlike the Islamic world, which is comprised of many nations. Therefore, this prophecy is about the pilgrimage in Mecca. This verse refers to the holy mountain, Mount Arafat standing in the Mount of Arafat is the main pillar of pilgrimage in Islam. The sacrifices, during pilgrimage rams are slaughtered for the poor to commemorate the story of Abraham and Ishmael, sacrifices. Spot on the life of Jesus. Say, He is God, who is, one, Allah, the eternal refuge. He neither begets nor is born, nor is there to him any equivalent. Quran 1.12 Say, O Messenger, He is Allah who is alone in being a deity. There is no deity except Him. Say, He is Allah, who is, one. Alone, without another, indivisible with absolute and permanent unity and distinct from all else. The one and only true deity, unique in his essence, attributes and deeds. He is the master to whom belongs all sovereignty and perfect, beautiful qualities. The one to whom all creation turn to. Allah, the eternal refuge. He who is absolute, perfect, complete, essential, self-sufficient and sufficient to meet the needs of all creation. The one eternally and constantly required and sought, depended upon by all existence and to whom all matters will ultimately return. The one who did not give birth to anyone, nor did anyone give birth to him. So he has no offspring, may he be glorified, nor any parent. He neither begets, nor is born. Nor does he have any equal from his creation. Nor is there to him any equivalent. Quran, Eklas, 112, 1-4 The Creator is self-sufficient. He is apart from his creation, it does not befit his majesty to take a son or wife, or to beget or to be begotten, and there is no similitude to him. God, who created space and time, is necessarily transcendent in relation to both. Causation is a law for us who live in space and time, and it is an error on our part to think that he is bound by either. It is God who created the law of causation and we cannot consider him as a subject to the law he created, therefore God does not change. He created the time, so he is not subjected to time. He does not go through the same stages of time that we go through, does not get tired, and does not need to put himself in a physical form or descend to earth. We cannot see him in this life, because we are trapped in time and space, while he transcends both. God is perfect, he has no need to die for us. He gives life and death, so he did not die nor was he resurrected. He saved his prophet Jesus and protected him as he helps and protects his believers. God is most merciful to his creatures, more than a mother is to her children, so he forgives them whenever they repent to him. For Muslims neither Jesus nor God died for humanity on the cross. This belief is shared by many of the ancient Christians who deny the crucifixion of the Christ, Christian historians list many Christian sects who deny the crucifixion. The Followers of Basilides Basilides was an early Christian Gnostic religious teacher in Alexandria, Egypt, from 117 to 138 c. This is a period of time close to the time of the disciples. And it is believed that he got his teachings from Peter and other disciples of Jesus. For example, believed that Jesus Christ was not crucified, as did at least 15 sects of earlier Christians such as the Corinthians and Marquis. Some of these sects who were in a period of time closer to the time of Jesus also believe one of Jesus' disciples was crucified instead of him. The denial of the crucifixion of Jesus continued with the monk, the Odorus, 560 c, and the bishop John, the son the governor of Cyprus, 610 c. It was also denied by the author of the book Holy Blood, Holy Cup of Christ. He stated in his book that Christ was not crucified, and it was the traitor, Judas Iscariot, who was crucified instead of Christ. Although Holy Quran does not mention the name of the one who replaced Jesus on the cross, we will try to follow the logic which points to this supposition as follows. The Crucifixion According to the Quran and Bible Every man will bear his own burden. 
dash, but Abraham fulfilled his obligations that no bearer of burdens will bear the burden of another and that there is not for man except that for which he strives and that his effort is going to be seen then will be recompensed for it with the fullest recompense. Quran 53, 37-41 And the scriptures of Abraham who fulfilled everything his Lord tasked him with that no person will bear the sin of another and that man will only obtain the reward of the action that he did and that his action will be openly seen on the day of judgment. Then he will be given the recompense of his action in full without reduction. And that to your Lord, O Messenger, will be the return and destination of the servants after they die. And that he makes whoever he wills happy and makes him laugh, and makes whoever he wills sad and makes him cry. And that he causes the living to die in the world and brings the dead to life by resurrection. Surah and Najm 37-44 Whereby, the soul that sins, it will die. The son will not bear the iniquity of the father, neither will the father bear the iniquity of the son, the righteousness of the righteous will be upon him. And the wickedness of the wicked will be upon him. Ezekiel 18 verse 20 The lesson for humanity when God accepted Adam's repentance for eating the forbidden fruit is to seek the forgiveness of God. There is no issue of original sin. Every soul bears the burden of its own sin. This shows the merciful nature and justice of God. Forgiveness does not negate justice, nor does justice preclude forgiveness.